What's going on everybody? Listen, before we hop into this video, I want to let you know something. I heard you, all right? I know some of you need credit cards out there. Some of you are questioning, man, how am I supposed to pay my mortgage, you know, with this credit card? Well, listen, I've got the links right here, right below, okay? So I got the credit card hookup, I got the plastic hookup. Um, please go ahead and check those links out below and let's get into it. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode. Listen. Today I got posed a question that I really think would revolutionize your way of banking, especially in these tumultuous times, especially when the economy crisis is on the brink. Listen, Velocity Banking can save the economy. Go ahead and write that down in the comments below. Velocity Banking can save the economy. Okay, not just the banking, but the principles in general. So listen, let's get right into this question that actually is a question that is born from frustration, okay? You got lines of credit, multiple lines of credit, but you don't know how to work the system. We want to show that to you in this video. All right, let's do it. So CJ, I got six lines of credit, okay? Six, that's beautiful, all right? Now, of course, those that own credit cards, I recommend three to five. If you got lines of credit, however many you want, all right? Six lines of credit, CJ, and the total credit limit is $13,250. I got a combined balance of $8,793. My total income is $3,500 a month, and my expenses is $2,984. What do I do in order to get a hold of my finances? Because sometimes the cash flow is zero dollars. Can you help me? The answer to that, Marcus, is absolutely. All right. So let's go out. Whenever we approach a problem, okay, we want to write out the problem and we want to define the problem. We want all the scenarios. Now, how many of you hated word problems growing up? I hated them. Who knows? Right? Right? Who knew that I would make my living off of word problems? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that how life goes? So let's go ahead and do it. Let's write out all the scenarios. He said six lines of credit. So we're just going to go ahead and I like making a picture, right? So let's go ahead and put the picture there of these lines of credit. I like making boxes. You can do something similar. Perhaps you have another method, and that's okay. But I'm going to make six boxes here, right? And one more. And they're all going to represent the lines of credit. So let's go ahead and get these boxes in there. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and move this up here just a little bit so that you can see the boxes. We'll turn it just a little bit there. All right. So let's go ahead and see this. <clears throat> Let's have each of these boxes represent $1,465, meaning, meaning that that's going to be the balance that are in these boxes, all right? $1,465. Why? Because that adds up to approximately $8,793. Those are the balances, okay? So let's say you have this right here. We're going to just divide them out. Now, where did I get the number? 1,465, can you answer that? Where did I get that? 8,793 divided by six. That's right, because we have six lines of credit. Now, he didn't let me know about which balances were on each line of credit. We just take the average, all right? So we do know also that he makes $3,500 a month, okay? Each month, that's the income, and we're gonna have I as the income. We're gonna put that in a box as well, right? Then we're gonna have E as the expenses, that's right. 2,984, we'll just write that right here. We'll put that in a box as well. 
2,984 each month. All right, what else do we know? Okay, we want to write it all out, folks. Let's write it all out. Okay, we also know that he has a cash flow of $516 each month. How do we get that? $3,500 minus $2,984 is $516 each month of cash flow. And we also know about the total credit limit. So we want to go ahead and put that total credit limit on top of these boxes, okay? So $13,250 divided by six, what is that gonna equal? Huh? Go ahead and get your calculator out. All right, so we have $2,208 on each of the lines of credit as the credit limit, all right? On each of these lines of credit. Remember the total line of credit, right? All, on all of them was $13,250, while the balance, okay, total, is $8,793. So with this information, and we've got all of the information, what can we do in order to assist Marcus in utilizing the Velocity Banking Method? I mean, where do we start, all right? And so, of course, we want to start where? We want to start with the cash flow. We understand that sometimes this number is zero for whatever reason. That's what he said. So we want to eliminate this number being zero. How do we do that? We make sure we're implementing the velocity banking method the correct way. All right. Now, Marcus, listen closely. You've got... $3,500 in income. Where is that income going to go? It's going to go into one, one of these lines of credit. Absolutely. So that income, that flow of cash, that cash, okay, is going to go into one of these lines of credit. What happens to the rest? You're going to pay the minimum balance on all of them. Mm -hmm. It's going to be minimum balance on all the rest of them. While this one line of credit gets utilized, that is going to be our velocity banking account. That's what's going to drive more cash flow into our wallets. Do we understand? Because when you pay your income into your line of credit, what's your minimum balance on that line of credit each month? Zero dollars. So whatever minimum payment you had, guess what? That has translated into cash flow. You have literally taken your minimum monthly payment, which we'll call MINMO, and you've translated it into cash flow. That rhymes, doesn't it? Transfer your MINMO into cash flow. That's what the Velocity Banking Method does. That's what placing your income inside of one of your lines of credit does. Now, remember, you still have expenses. How are you going to pay those expenses? From your line of credit, not your checking account. This is very important. Never use your checking account the way you have before. Now, there may be some instances in which you need to use your checking account, and that's okay, all right? Just remember that velocity, leverage, and balance is what we are aiming for, what we are focused on. And in order to achieve leverage, we've got to use one of these lines of credit with the full income amount inside of it. And we have to, this is our focus, okay? We have to use that line of credit to then push out and pay our expenses. Does that make sense? All right. Now, like I said, all of the line of credit is gonna go into one of your lines of, 
lines of credit, one of your income is going inside of your line of credit, from your line of credit, you're going to pay those expenses. What that does is it takes that minimum monthly payment, okay, and it transfer, transforms it. It transforms it into cash flow, all right? Now, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My balance is only $1,465 on that one line of credit, and I've got $2,208 as a, as a credit limit on that card, CJ. What, what, what gives? When you see that happen, what happens next? You take the overflow, okay? <laughs> yeah, you take the overflow and then just go to the next card, okay? Now, your card, your line of credit may not be like this, where it's even on all of them. Okay, if that's the case, then you take the highest limit card or line of credit and the highest balance, okay? If it's the highest balance, that is the first thing you do. That's the priority, the highest balance, okay? So you take the highest balance line of credit and you apply the income there. All right? Absolutely. And what you're going to do, what you're going to see through this is as you pay off these cards, this number is going to be going up 200 and then you'll pay off another card, let's say it's another 200, and then you'll pay off another card, that's another 200. Do we understand? And you're paying them off not by starving yourself, not by going on the beans and rice diet, all right? Not by doing all of these other things that are unnecessary sacrifices. Folks, there's nothing wrong with sacrifice, but there is everything wrong with unnecessary sacrifice. And so we do not want to take unnecessary sacrifices. Do we understand? All right, so look, the income is going inside of one of your lines of credit, and then from that line of credit, you're going to be paying the expenses. Don't worry about the rest of the lines of credit continue to pay your monthly payments on all the rest of them. When you're done with this line of credit, just hop to the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, and then the next one, until you're at zero. But remember, when you're at zero, that's the starting place. Isn't that what ground zero is? Ground zero is the starting place. Now, you can start to build wealth. Okay, can you imagine, just imagine with me for a moment, what you can do to your bank account and to your legacy and how you can build your wealth by placing the same amount of money you did into cards, into yourself instead, into your business instead, into real estate investments instead, into Index Universal Life instead, Infinite Banking instead, instead of getting your finances from somewhere else, begging someone to loan you money while you're making them money, right? Won't you make money all for yourself? Won't you finance yourself? <laughs> and we could talk about that ad infinitum. But listen, this should do uh, very well for you, all right? If you have any questions, don't hesitate. Give me the time, your time, to transform your life, all right? Listen, folks. Don't just know Velocity Banking, live it. God bless and you have a great night.